How's it going everybody? After using the OnePlus 6T for several months now, I've come to love the setup that I've created. So in this video, I'm going to share it with you guys and also share some of my favorite less popular apps that I use each day. First things first, I'm rocking the regular Midnight Black OnePlus 6T with 128 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. I recently did a long-term review of this phone, so click the eye in the right corner if you wanna check out that video after watching this one. Let's start it with the launcher that I'm using. It's called Hyperion Launcher. It's free in the Play Store. I chose this launcher because the design is very similar to the Pixel Launcher found on the Pixel 3. Plus it's extremely customizable, has extra features, and is stable to use. I used to use Launcher V2, but with their most recent updates, the search bar on the OnePlus 6T has been dropped to an uncomfortable position when using the gesture navigation, and I can't seem to fix that, so until they fix it, I'll be sticking with Hyperion. Let me show you what I modified in the settings so you can get a similar setup. Also, I'll include a link down below to download my profile setup so you can quickly apply my Launcher settings, wallpaper, and desktop widgets. Anyways, in the colors menu, I set the overall theme to transparent and changed the accent color to dark blue. In the interface menu, I have the option of locking any app I want with my fingerprint, so I decided to lock my photos app since I didn't want anyone using my phone to go through my photos. I also hid what I consider unnecessary icons in my app drawer to keep it clean. Things like icon packs, duplicate system apps, and widgets. I also enabled a page scrolling indicator for the desktop and used the dots style. Under the drawer menu and then folders, I also created a folder for all my wallpaper apps since I have so many. I set the folder to appear before the alphabetical app list. Going back to menu, I enabled app suggestions to show my frequently used apps at the top of the drawer. For the divider, I used the text style. In the widgets menu, I enabled the Google search widget to show in the dock and the app drawer. Under more options, I toggled the show assistant icon so I can quickly access Google Assistant from my home screen. Jumping into the iconography menu, I set my icon pack to Afterglow. I'll explain why I use that icon pack in a minute and I'll link that app down below. And of course, I'll enable notification dots. Under the gestures menu, I made the swipe up action to bring up my app drawer. One finger swipe down for notifications and two finger swipe down to pull down my quick settings panel. That's it for my launcher settings. I also downloaded Hyperion Dock, which is an add-on to enable the Google Feed panel on the home screen. It's not available in the Play Store, but it is on APK Mirror, so that link will also be right below that thumbs up button. Jumping to my home screen, I have a 5x2 KWGT widget at the top. The template is by an app called Magma for KWGT. It has very beautiful widgets for clocks, weather, search bars, music, and more. It does cost $1.19, but with that purchase, you get 78 widgets with new ones added in regularly and 62 wallpapers. The one on my home screen is Magma 14. I chose to use this one because it looks like the cards that are found in the Google Feed panel. The first card shows me the date and time, but also acts as a music player. Tapping on it brings up Spotify. And the second card lets me see the current weather forecast. Tapping on that opens up OnePlus's weather app. Towards the bottom, I have two folders. The left one is titled Google and it contains all of my favorite Google apps. And the right one is my social apps. All these apps, including the ones on my dock, are my most used apps, so I have them available on my home screen for easy access. The screen on the right has a very large KWGT calendar widget. It shows me all my current calendar events, and tapping on it will open Google Calendar. The template is by Pixie KWGT, which costs a dollar in the Play Store. It's widget number 43, however, I did change the colors to match my dark theme. Their original widget was white, but I changed it to black. I've sent the custom file to the developer so you can upload it to the app, so be on the lookout for that future update. Right below the calendar widget, I have two smaller widgets to remotely unlock my custom PC and my laptop with my smartphone's fingerprint sensor. The app that allows me to do this is called Remote Fingerprint Unlock. I made a whole separate video on my personal channel how two men reviewing this app in detail and showing you how to get it working, so click that eye in the right corner to watch that video. Lastly, as I said before, I'm using Afterglow for my icon pack. I'm utterly in love with these icons because they have a material design, but they also stand out from the competition by using pastel colors and a glow behind each icon for a signature look. In other words, each icon has unique details that match the app's original icon, but the glow and height and vibrancy provide a consistent and tweak look. They do have a free version with only 600 icons, but I bought the pro version for just $1.45 since it does provide over a thousand icons and it gets 80 new icons every week. For the wallpaper, I recently found an amazing designer on Twitter called Arthur. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, but he has various series of wallpapers that he constantly updates, styles cover material, landscape, gradient, and my overall favorite, liquid wallpapers. I like to switch off between these liquid walls since they're also amazing, but I always come back to this specific liquid wallpaper since it reminds me of a delicious caramel and it fits in well with my dark theme look. 
So that's my entire home screen setup. Now let's move on to some of my favorite apps that I use on my phone. By the way, all these apps will be linked down below and I won't be talking about popular social or regular apps that everyone uses like Instagram, Twitter, messages, etc. Let's start it off with some of my favorite wallpaper apps. I use AMOLED walls for when I want a solid dark background with a neat design. Dark wallpapers are great ways for saving battery on AMOLED displays, so that's why I use it. But the same developer also created WallHub for bright and material style walls. These are two of my all time favorite wallpaper apps, especially since the developer adds in new ones every day. Other apps that I use for graphically designed wallpapers include the famous backdrops, Milu walls, pixel walls, and unusual wallpapers. I also use red papers for when I want a random wallpaper from a popular Reddit page. Wall drill for a backdrop that is an astonishing photograph of a beach, mountain, etc. And Google wallpapers portal with the Google Pixels 3 live wallpapers. In non-wallpaper apps, I use Action Dash to find information on how I use my phone and what apps I use the most. It's a great alternative to Google's digital well-being. App Tiles lets me add up to six of my favorite apps in my quick settings panel. Asphalt 9 for some fun, action-packed racing. Graphics within this game are astonishing. Hide It Pro, which is an app disguised as an audio manager to hide pictures, videos, music, messages, apps, and more if you have root. I use CleanFox to quickly delete and unsubscribe from unwanted emails, newsletters, and spam. It works with any email provider including Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, iCloud Mail, and more. There's ClickCloud, which is a simple tool to sync my clipboard between my computer and my Android device. You also need the Chrome plugin. For when I want to track all of my favorite artists on Spotify, I use Crab Hands to figure out new releases and see what festivals are occurring with the artists that I'm currently following. Fluid is one of the best torrent downloaders on the Play Store. It's simple beautiful and has no speed limits on downloads or uploads. After trying plenty of third-party screen recorders over the years, MNML Screen Recorder is brand new on the Play Store and it's one of the best I've ever used. It has no ads, keeps the settings simple, features a beautiful material design, and it's very easy to use. There are also plenty of voice recorders on the Play Store, but I think Otter Voice Notes is the best one by far. It can transcribe any recordings live, sync recordings to the cloud, you can search words within your recordings, and even import pre-recorded audio to obtain the transcribed conversations. Recent notifications is great for when I accidentally swiped away a notification without reading it. It keeps a history of all my incoming notifications along with the details. Sip News is a simple app to read up on interesting tech stories that occurred recently. Solid Explorer File Manager is my favorite file manager app that I've been using for years. I use Telegram since most developers who used to be on Google Plus are now moving their community to this messaging app. Shameless plug, I also just started my Telegram group called How To Men. Follow that community for some awesome Android setups. And lastly, since I download dozens of apps every week, I use Unapp to easily uninstall multiple apps at once. Anyways, that's everything that's on my OnePlus 6T. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.